there is a great difference in writing a play and, and writing a screenplay. From my point of view, when you're writing a play, you know exactly what you're going to see, what the audience is going to see. You know, for the most part, you'll see a proscenium stage um, in which there's curtains and the curtain will come down and the, the actors will come in from the sides or various other points. But no matter what side of the theater you're sitting in, you're basically seeing the same thing. The angle might be sl slightly different. When you're writing a film, no matter what you put down on paper, the director will make that choice. He could be shooting from above, from below, from inside, uh, anywhere. So the, the, the film always surprises you. Stop. Huh? Do not move. Something wrong here. What is the pop? Do not ask questions. Do as I say. When I tell you jump, you jump. <laughs> Holy Shanghai! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Lionel Twain. Murder by Death had some minor visual gimmicks and uh, interesting looking things, but basically it's almost a play. It could have all been staged in that one room if I wanted to make it into a play. Good God, what an entrance. Murder by Death was like writing a screenplay as if I was 16 years old or 15. In other words, that's what I was seeing in those days. I was seeing Maltese Falcon and, and uh, Agatha Christie's uh, and then there were none. Um, the Sam Spade films, which was Bogart, and uh, Nick and Nora Charles, which was the Thin Man series, sort of put them all together and concocted a picture that was very similar. It was a takeoff. I mean, I wasn't really writing an original film, although it was original, everything in it, but I based it on all of those films I had seen as kids. So I was cashing in on the opportunity of making a film with the people that I saw in those earlier pictures. So I had Bogart in the film, only it was Peter Falk. All right, cut to Malarkey. This trip is strictly business with me. Now, what do you got on this Twain guy? Then I had the Thin Man. Instead of William Powell, I had David Niven and his wife. Instead of Myrna Loy, I had Maggie Smith. It sounded as though somebody snipped the wire. Really? What did it sound like? Snip. Despite the fact that I was using um, the characters or uh, similes of, of these characters, I had to create an original story. And so I came up with a man who wanted to be a detective, who was angry with all of the detective books he read, which is what I went through as a kid. Sometimes you'd read an Agatha Christie book or, or someone else, maybe not quite as good as her, in which you finally f got to those last five pages and you hear the denim, oh, the end of the film of who killed who and why they did it. And then they gave it new information. You've all been so clever for so long. You've forgotten to be humble. You've tricked and fooled your readers for years. You've tortured us all with surprise endings that made no sense. You've introduced characters in the last five pages that were never in the book before. You've withheld clues and information that made it impossible for us to guess who did it. You know, it was just a wild guess, but you had no real information. So I wanted to do a spoof on that, so to speak. No one is leaving this house. I like the idea of the castle. I like the idea of all the gates came down. The windows were shut, everything. They were locked in. What meaning of this, Mr. Twain? Stephen Grimes, the, the set designer, had a long history of uh, credits that were absolutely great. And he actually built that whole castle inside the soundstage. It was enormous. I have taken the liberty of putting you in the same wing as Mr. Wang. Mm. Oh, isn't that nice, darling? We're in Wang's wing. So I, I like that gimmick of keeping them all there. And there was a, the game was that there was going to be a murder committed that night, and he was going to give a million dollars to the, uh, the single detective who would guess or, or discover the murderer. The interesting thing ab about it was that the man who made the game, Truman Capote, playing that part, was the one who became the victim. He was killed. Ah, Mr. Twain. You appear to be wrong. Nobody here murdered. Please to come in. Well, I had the benefit of using film uh, and adapting it to, let's say, what I would have done on the stage, but couldn't, of 
having the people all in the room, then two of them leave because they hear a scream and they go out to examine it and then they come back to the room, that, which was the dining room, and there's no one there. You're never gonna believe. I said I'd be out in a minute. Being able to do that kind of stuff was great fun for me. If I was doing a play, the audience would say, or the critics would say, why are you doing that? What does that mean? And how did they do that? I didn't have to do that with this picture. I just did what I wanted to do. Anything that was funny and anything that moved the story ahead. You're fired, do you understand? Fired. I want you out. Do you hear? Out. And stay out. Bob Moore was wonderful to work with. I loved his sense of humor, wonderful sense of humor. Uh, he had never, never done film before. He probably acted in some, but he said a camera is a camera, and you know, acting is acting, and humor is humor. So uh, he shot it well. He had a lot of help, I'm sure, from uh, Ray, Ray Stark, the producer's staff. But he did a real good job with him, so that when we got to do the sequel, it was, it was him again that I wanted. We had such, great, such a great cast. Alec Guinness and David Niven, Maggie Smith, Elsa Lanchester, Peter Falk, Jimmy Coco, go on and on. I, I was amazed. On the first day of the reading of the play, they all walked, uh, the screenplay, they all walked into this uh, studio room, and I was aghast that all these people were mine, so to speak. Alec Guinness brought his, the cane with him and, and the things he was going to use for his eyes. He was completely prepared. He didn't need makeup or anything. Do you think they'll come, sir? Oh, they'll come. They'll come all right. I don't think I dared say, well, I'd like Alec Guinness and I'd like David Niffin. We just sort of talked about it. Uh, and we had lists of things, and, and the casting director gave lists of names. And I said, could we get these people, Ray? And he said, certainly we can get them, of course. And we did. We got them all. I mean, everyone we wanted. All right, hold it right there. Freeze, Winky. Get your hands up. Turn your face to the wall. I think Peter Falk, I, I really wanted. By that time, I had already done the play of Prison of Second Avenue with Peter and worked with him. I really loved him. Turn around, geez. Your concrete Christmas present arrived about two seconds early. No thanks to you. I apologize for any unfortunate mishap, sir. Uh, may I put my hands down? Don't test your luck, Shakespeare. I met Alec Guinness for the first time. Uh, I was awed by him, much more than anyone else, and uh, always sort of bowed to him in a sense by saying, Alec, if there's anything you don't like in this, just tell me and I'll fix it. And he says, no, 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 dear boy. He says, it's wonderful. It's a great change for me. It's great fun. And then I saw him sitting during the, uh, the lighting breaks and he was reading a script and I could see this, the name of the script. And I looked at it and said, Star Wars. And I said, what's that about, Alec? He said, uh, the future. He says, good stuff, I think. We'll see. I remember getting a phone call in New York from Orson Welles. And Orson Welles was the one who was asked to play the Charlie Chan character first. But he was so nice to me and he said, I loved it, I loved it. He says, I can't do it because I have to do a, a one of those King plays in Italy. He says, who's, who's playing the, uh, the part of the, uh, of the man who throws the party? And I said, Truman Capote. He says, you're joking. <laughs> and he said, oh well, he'll pull it together somehow. Mr. Wang. The victim is here at this very table at this very moment. And so too, ladies and gentlemen, is the murderer. Actually, I was trying to get Truman Capote out of the picture. So was Bob Moore. I thought we could have been better served with, with a real actor in there, but he represented some very unique, uh, idiosyncratic character. I love doing that picture primarily because I was so free with the humor and I, I loved the, uh, the response I got from the actors who would read it and laugh at the first reading. Uh, and I try to make it as, as sophisticated as I could and yet available and accessible to, to a, a movie audience who was a, a different kind of, then not a Noel Coward kind of an audience and I couldn't write that kind of dialogue. But uh, I think it was a lot smarter than a lot of other, uh, of those kinds of pictures.